Well, it's 1.30. Welcome to the regularly scheduled Board of Trustees meeting, Ames Community College, August 10th, 2022. Um, I'll call the meeting to order. And uh, first of all, please stand. And I'm going to ask uh, Trustee O'Hara to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move that we approve the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. I'll read the items. Minutes of the May 11th, 2022 district board meeting. Minutes of the June 21st, 2022, June 22, 2022 district board retreat. C, new policy 526 employment benefits. D, revise, revised policy 506 safety and health. C, revised policy 509 equal opportunity and anti discrimination. F, revised policy 510 employment of personnel. G, revised policy 518 compensation and classification. H, repeal policy 4-400 evaluation. And I, repeal policy 4-601 overtime. And again, all of these uh, items, except for the minutes, are policy uh, revisions uh, from Schultz, our executive director of human resources. Do I have a motion? Sure. Oh, sorry, I missed you. J, repeal policy 4-1150, status of employees, and K, repeal policy 4-1200, insurance. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I so move. I second it. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, and that motion carries. Okay, next on the agenda is public comment. Zach, I see you're at the podium. Do we have any public comment? Uh, there are no public comments. All right, thank you for that, sir. There are no public comments. Next is presentation from guests and representatives to the board. First of all, Ames at Excellence at Ames, Kelly Zielman, Program Manager for Alumni and Corporate Engagement. And our alumna is Matisse Parent. You pronounced her name right. I bet that doesn't happen hey. very often on the first try, does it? <laughs> I am really happy for you to meet Natisse Parent. I know some of you know her already. Um, she is a Northern Colorado native, has lived in the Greeley area off and on for the last 13 years. When she, um, I'll let her tell you a lot about her story about Ames. She um, currently serves as the Director of Investor Relations for the Greeley Area Chamber of Commerce. And if any of you have taken or known anyone who has done Leadership Weld County, the Leadership Weld County program in the last four years, you can thank Natisse. If you have been to the Greeley Area Chamber's dinner that had over 1,100 people, you can thank Natisse. If you participated in the golf tournament, you can thank Natisse. And there are a million other things that you can thank Natisse for. But I love that she is helping to build a stronger community in the business world in, in our among our businesses through her role with the Chamber of Commerce. When she is not planning events and doing all kinds of things at the Chamber, you can find her maybe painting or throwing axes. This woman can throw a mean axe. So I am so happy for you to meet my friend Natiz Parent. I 
I had to approve her. Uh, she was able to say that I can throw an axe. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for having me here today. I, I'm, I'm super honored to have been asked to um, come here and speak. Um, as Kelly mentioned, I am a native in Northern Colorado. I graduated from Windsor High School in 2009, and I actually began my college career at uh, UNC in 2009. Um, after my first year of college, I explored a lot of different areas and uh, didn't really find anything I wanted to pursue. So I first came to Ames in 2012 with an interest in healthcare. Um, what I really loved about Ames, I remember my first my first meeting with the counselor, and at this point I had explored different. I did explore different schools. It was not my first choice, but I will get to the good part. Uh, the environment on campus, I was incredibly impressed with. I. I was so it was inviting to me and I knew that it was a good fit for me and it was because of that first meeting and my first visit to campus that I kind of knew that this was my this was my place and this is where I was going to start whatever journey journey I was going to go on. Um, it was very well explained to me there were resources there were professors the class there, there's an array of classes that you can take and there was help provided to me and it, they made it very clear in that so I just um, that's why I stayed so it was very welcoming here. So in 2012, I had an interest in healthcare, and there was a, uh, a nurse's aid program that I wanted to try out, and I did receive a certification at that point. And after a few years in healthcare, I had realized that was not my path to go. So uh, I took what we all know as a gap year to find myself, and uh, I put my finger on a map, and I moved across the country. Um, I experienced beach life and I had every intention on coming back to Colorado. I knew this was going to be my place to further my education. So after a few years, that's what I did. I came back to Colorado and I came back to Ames. So my goal when I first came back in 2015 was to be the first in my family, first generation to receive an associate degree here. Um, that was the only thing I had my, my eyes set on. I want to be the first one. So I did receive an associate's, uh, an associate of arts degree in May of 2016, although it says 2017, so I'd have to probably think back to last 10 years of my life. Um, my experience at Ames was truly enjoyable. I took a few semesters of painting acrylic classes, which is something I do continue to do now. Um, wine included, which I am by, knee, my, I'm by means no Monet, but it, it is very enjoyable. Um, my least favorite subject was indeed math. And it was for the first time I had ever experienced tutoring, which was here on campus. And I could not be more grateful for that experience. I, um, it, it kind of takes a little bit of a swallow your pride and just get some help. and. I, I can't be more grateful to the faculty who took the time to do that because I passed the class. Um, so Ames not only provided me a platform and a launch pad for my life, but it, it truly did give me hope and faith that I could do anything. And that was not mentality that I grew up with or was taught. Um, I did come from a family of substance abuse, domestic violence, and a little bit of a broken picture. So I had a choice to make, and I, I had to make a choice whether or not to let that affect me, and I didn't. So I did choose to further my education, and even though I didn't know where it would take me, it, it all started here at Ames. And was it challenging? Yes, it was very challenging. Um, but here I am standing before you all, so thank you very much. Um, after Ames, the winter of 2016, I applied to Metropolitan State University of Denver, and after two years, I received a, a Bachelor of Science degree in Tourism, Hospitality, and Events with a minor in Sociology. And I am the first in the family tree to receive a bachelor's degree. And thank you. I placed that quote on my graduation cap so everyone knew. So it's 2018, I have a BA in my hand, what am I gonna do with this? So through a grapevine of conversations, I ended up applying to the Greeley Area Chamber of Commerce. And in 2018, I was hired as the administrative assistant. 
I since then moved into event and the programs role, and I have had um, many experiences through that time coordinating events, and now four years later, I'm the director of investor relations. My main focus is the right hand to the president, Jamie Henning. I assist the president in areas of focus of advocacy, public policy, workforce, leadership, professional development. I focus on the organization's processes and ensuring that our team has what they need to do their jobs and be strong for our community. So the funny part about having to be tutored in math is uh, that I now run the finances and the budgets and the accounts receivable <laughs> for the chamber, and I actually enjoy it. <laughs> um, so bringing this all together, you could say from my time here at Ames to my current career, um, it's come full circle. When I started as my own, my own leadership and professional development and career development here at Ames, it turned into me providing those opportunities to other people in our communities so we can keep our city strong. So it's come full circle that way. And I am proud to say that I am an alumni here because it's provided me so much in my life. And so I can give that back to other people. So thank you. Patrice, we need you back up at the podium, please. <laughs> well, thank you, Natish, for sharing your uplifting story with us, and uh, we are very proud to, to call you an alumnus of Ames. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind you would have done well in healthcare, also. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> so, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to give you, you this gift and just thank you for bringing the, the high quality education information to our community and in particular uh, through the chamber and so forth because uh, we're, we want to be a real uh, workforce development uh, force behind uh, this community and uh, just keep up your good work. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Chair Oxiger, are you are you ready for the next item? Oh, I, I think you're on mute. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, next on our uh, agenda is Student Government Association uh, representative to the board, Danielle Irwin. Hello. Thank you. Greetings, esteemed members of the board, Chair Oxiger and Dr. Bornstein. I am Danielle Irwin, the new student government president. I am honored to be here and to share this space with you. Um, before I begin, I would like to introduce the newest members of SGA and CAP. If I could have SGA, please stand first. Um, we have Madeline Parks, our executive vice president of finance. We have Anya Blacken Blackenhart, vice president of facilities and operations. Jared Polito, the Vice President of Public Relations. Daniel Blackwell, the Vice President of Academic Affairs. Stephanie Thompson, the Vice President of Student Engagement, Inclusion and Success. And now if I could please have CAP stand. We have Monica Hernandez jackson Civic Engagement and Voter Registration Student Program Director. Rosemary Mena, the Mental Health Student Program Director. Elijah Strauss, the Wellness Student Program Director, Devry Boston, our Family and Evening Student Program Director, Hannah Vanderloo, our Sexual Health slash Safety and Violence Prevention Student Program Director, Angela May, our Loveland slash Virtual Student Program Director, Jacqueline Rodriguez Gonzalez, our Windsor Student Program Director, and Phoebe Jonas, our Fort Lepton Student Program Director. Thank you. Now, this summer, the new students have attended various training sessions to prepare us for our new roles. 
We have learned how to develop and implement strategies to better identify the needs of our students and how we may advocate on their behalf. We have also learned skills and qualities that we have also learned the skills and qualities that will allow us to provide exceptional programs for our students and the community. A handful of us were able to attend the Coalition of Colorado Campus Alcohol and Drug Educators Conference in Denver. Now, this conference was exceptionally interesting to me because it highlighted that the percentage of perceived substance use is much higher than the actual substance use. Now, this information gives me hope because it illustrates that individuals abuse substances far less than we believe. However, this also demonstrates that the individuals who need resources surrounding substance abuse are not obtaining the level of care that they require due to the normalization of substance abuse in society. I am excited to research more on this topic and hopefully share more insights in future months. Now, with that being said, we are very excited to begin the new semester and advocate for the students here at Ames. Um, additionally, I would like to formally invite you all to some of our upcoming events that we have planned for the Welcome Week. Some of our Welcome Week activities include the outdoor movie that will be hosted by the Campus Activities Programming Board on August 26th. We will be featuring the bad guys at dusk and Artie's Bistro will be providing refreshments. In addition, I would like to invite you all to the outdoor painted piano unveiling that will take place August 25th. We will have two separate unveilings, the first being at 9 a.m. on the west side of the student commons and the second unveiling at 2 p.m. on the east side of the student commons. I am very excited for the unveiling. This project, which has been passed down from our predecessors, has been a wonderful opportunity and experience for our students to showcase their artistic talents. Um, we hope to see you there. Thank you so much. We highly appreciate your time and thank you for this opportunity to share with you. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Okay, no questions. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Danielle. It's always great to hear uh, from our Student Government Association, and we look forward to hearing from you in the next few months uh, as we progress through the semester. Next is our Ames Faculty Association, Mumi Toroy. Hello, and a big good afternoon to Chair Agsiger, members of the board, Dr. V, Dr. Rothimer, all the cabinet members, students, colleagues, and friends. I have a question for you. Did anyone miss me? Yes. <laughs> well, that is the correct answer. It was a rhetorical question, always answer yes. That's my roundabout way of saying that I will continue to be the AFA BOT representative for the next year. It's such an honor and a privilege to be here. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce Julia Weingart. Julia is going to be my partner in crime. <laughs> and she is the newly elected AFA BOT representative for this academic year. Julia is a professor of communication and English, and she brings joy and happiness wherever she goes. So can I get an applause for Julia for starting her new role? <laughs> now, I cannot start this without thanking our student representatives our SGA members, our CAP members, and our alumni student representative. What a wonderful job they do. And they remind us of our purpose, values, and mission. Thank you. We needed that inspiration as we get into our fall semester. <laughs> now coming back to the job that I was sent here to do, <laughs> let's talk about our faculty. So we'll start with Linda Carlson. She is the adjunct instructor of early childhood education, and she participated in a workshop recently 
titled Ensuring Preparation of Inclusive Early Childhood Education by Enhancing ECE Teacher Preparation. Now this touched my heart. The reason is she is bringing back resources and guidance to prepare our students to be those phenomenal early childhood educators who will work with children with disabilities and they are going to serve the ones who deserve the most yet mostly underserved. So kudos to Linda. Moving on, <laughs> adjunct instructor and physical education personal training associate Regina Stump, she has recently published a book. It's called Execute, a guide for your journey towards the most powerful version of you. Take courage to love. It is a great read for all and it's already on my Kindle list. Now continuing on the theme of performance, you are in for a treat. Brooke Elsie and Richard Busson, both of them are professors of music and they led a team of talented faculty in creating a musical recital this spring. What a treat and what an inspiration for our students. Now for the next one, I have to take a little pause because every time I read it, it inspires me and I get wowed, okay? All right, so here we go. Instructor of Physics and Astronomy, Dr. Fana Mulumor, was featured in the March edition of Science Magazine. She was interviewed as part of a series focused on the ongoing diversity efforts in the field of physics. And here is, we're not done yet. So here is the best part of it. She talked about our student, Carter Woodson. Why did she talk about Carter Woodson? Because he is the first student from a community college to get an NSF fund, National Science Foundation fund. It has never happened before. This is historical. So Dr. Fana Mulumor, Carter Woodson, we need more of you. You lift us up and keep on shining. And if you thought that was the finale, it's not. <laughs> Next, I think you have heard of this one because it was prominently featured in Greeley Tribune, but because it is so great, we need to go over it once more. Instructor of Automotive Collision and Repair, Calvin Hanscom. Professor of Automotive Collision and Repair, Kyle Cadaret and Automotive Program Coordinator Kimberly Johnson guided a team of AIMS Automotive Collision and Repair students in a statewide competition called the Skills USA Championship. Now here is a question. Do you think we won anything there? Okay. How many? Good guess. 11. Our students won 11 medals. So um, I wanted to stop reading after this, but our faculty are awesome. Our students are awesome, so I have to continue. Please let me, okay? All right. So now we are going to talk about some award recipients. Please note, I cannot sum up in few words their contribution to the college. But I hope you will join me in appreciating their commitment to this college and our students. Let's start with Meg Spencer. She is the FTLC faculty coach and recipient of the faculty chosen staff of the year award in spring 2022. I do encourage you to look into the packet and look at what her nominator wrote. I'm just going to read one line which says numerous faculty members have told me that having Meg there greatly improved their abilities to teach well and thus improve employee satisfaction and student success. We are proud to have her here. Next up, we have Ted Pozayak and he is the instructor of fire science and he is the recipient of exemplary online teaching award. 
Now, here is the thing about TED. He partnered with industries to completely redesign the courses to meet our students' need better. Talk about an alignment of purpose and action. Next, Dr. Emma Murray. She is the recipient of Learner Center Teaching Award, and Emma is an innovator. She will find ways to help our students. And you know, when we talk about who's all in for AIMS, she is all in for AIMS. And finally, Francie Rotini. Amongst our many, many, many accomplishments, she is also the faculty who brought Yellow Day, which is an educational discussion platform. Wonderful, very interactive, and our students love it. Now, can I ask you one last question? Okay. When we talked about those awards, did you see a running theme going through that? Okay, that's the faculty me, right? Asking questions, okay. I think you all recognize the theme was serving our students. Student first. And last but not the least, Professor of Early Childhood Education, Christine Wiedemann, and Instructor of Early Childhood Education, Laura Killen Wing, reported that three early childhood students were awarded a summer scholarship from Well County's Early Childhood Council at United Way. And they also wanted to mention Kelly Jackson and the Ames Foundation for their tremendous work on that. Well, that brings me to the end finally. <laughs> and it's just been glorious to be here. And I am so excited to bring back more stories with Julia next time I see you. Meanwhile, is there any questions for me? Anything that I can help answer? I'll try my best. Looks good. Thank you, Momita. <laughs> Thank Welcome, you Julia. So much. <laughs> Thank you for your energy. Yeah, it's you. uplifting, and I'm sure everybody falls in your wake. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Mamita. It's always great to hear your report. We can't help but come away from this feeling extremely proud of, uh, of all of uh, our folks and the people you report on and Ames Community College. Uh, so thank you for that in-depth report. Next is Am Ames Staff Association, Mr. Ross Perkins. I cannot believe I have to follow both Danielle and Mamita the energy they bring, so I'm gonna to have to bring my A game today. So <laughs> strap in, be ready to go, all right? <laughs> well, first and foremost, it is an honor to be here today to represent the AIMS Staff Association. I am the new president of the AIMS Staff Association. The AIMS Staff Association. Um, I have served on ASA for about three years as the committee rep, so working with the convocation and conversation um, planning and uh, events and things, and so that's been an incredible experience. But I'm super excited about this opportunity to take on this leadership role to represent all of the staff across the AIMS campuses and everything, and so I'm super excited about the next hopefully a couple of years. Uh, we'll see how that goes and everything. But I have a couple of things I wanna talk about. Um, before I get started though, I wanna just take a moment and uh, there's one person I really wanna thank and that's Jen Seedorf. She is the outgoing president of ASA. She, in the last three years that she was the president, she, she's done some incredible things to get the ASA kind of going in a uh, direction of supporting staff, creating events that are uh, very staff-centered, uh, and really listening and bringing their voice uh, to the, the proper meetings and proper you know uh, areas that they need to be heard and things like that. So I hope to be able to continue that and work not only with Jen, but everybody uh, at Ames to be able to listen and bring the voice of the staff uh, to these meetings and things like that. Um, with that, we have a new leadership team for ASA. So I'm Ross Perkins, I'm the president. We have a co-president this year that's gonna be Megan Blazer. Uh, the secretary is gonna be Tiara Perez and then the committee rep will be Julia Chokop. So we're excited to work together. We have a planning committee uh, meeting coming up in a few days and then hopefully at the next meeting, I'll have a lot more to report out and things like that about what we're gonna plan to do for this year and stuff. 
Um, as in your report, uh, we have our ripples of recognition, and we had 13 ripples this past month, which I think is a great, you know, especially for summer. So let's give out those people. I want to thank Rachel Walsh for putting that together and, uh, and submitting that and everything. Um, it's just an incredible snapshot of the incredible things that staff and faculty and everybody's doing uh, here at Ames. However, I would like to highlight a few because I think, like Momita said, you will quickly uh, see a theme. I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just going to read a few statements out of them for about four or five of the um, re recognitions. So for Jackie Lyman, um, Jackie has a can-do attitude and a smile on her face. Emily Russell in HR, Emily is always so cheerful and helpful. Christina Hera, Christina assists and supports our program, is absolutely appreciated. Troy Fanberg, she is always so willing to help, listen to concerns and troubleshoot issues. And then finally, Kelly Richardson. Kelly is always willing to lend a helping hand. And there's a couple, there's a theme there, and even in the other ones that I didn't read, the willingness and the positive attitude to help and support our colleagues and our students here at Ames. Uh, and so I really want to just highlight that the staff are, you know, just the incredible work that they're doing uh, to support everybody that they work for and things like that. So I want to just give them a hand. Can we give all the staff here a hand real quick? Thank you to them. I want to just take a moment and thank Momita and Danielle for their presentations, but Momita mentioned something about uh, one of our students, Carter Woodson, and I would be remiss if I did not mention this. Uh, Carter is one of our science and math tutors over at the Early College Academy, and he's been with us for a few years now. And I got an opportunity to take this journey with him as he was at CU Boulder this year. And just another example of the incredible staff, even though he's a student here and was well, graduated already, but he was a student here last year. He's still with ECA. He's still going to tutor our students. And the impact that he's making to our ECA students, I had we had a student last year gave their final speech in their speech class about Carter and the impact that Carter has on them in that building. And it's absolutely incredible. So uh, I just want to recognize the incredible work that Carter is doing uh, over at ECA. Thank you. Finally, I'm just looking forward to reporting out the incredible things that staff are doing. Uh, I'm hoping that we can really maybe touch on some of the things that staff are doing outside of work to highlight some of those incredible experiences. And so I'm looking forward to the next meeting and thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Any questions of Ross? No, could I just make a statement? Yes, please. I love reading the ripples. I, you know, I, um, I think it's just a great showcase of, I think snippets of what's happening across campus, so. Yeah, there, Thank you. there are things in the ripples. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that was happening. And so it's an incredible way to kind of know what's happening, what, what your colleagues are doing. So thank you very much. So if there are no questions, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ross. We look forward to hearing from you in the future. Uh, next is uh, action items. Um, first uh, action item is the uh, Board of Trustees priorities for 2022 to 23. Uh, if you'll remember, uh, we were discussing this uh, during kind of towards the end of our retreat. And uh, a couple of folks had to uh, leave earlier for uh, some business reasons. And so we continued the conversation and uh, we thought we were fairly final on it, but we thought we better ask at the beginning, at the beginning of this action item, uh, since you've now had a chance to review them in your packet to see if there are any questions, um, any changes you want to make, uh, anything at all um, before we, uh, we actually take a vote on this, just in case we didn't finish out what someone might have wanted to do or say while we were doing this. So with that, um, I'll um, ask, are there any further questions?
If there are none, then I would ask for a motion to adopt the Board of Trustees priorities for 2022 to 23. I move that we adopt the priority, the board priorities as presented. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, that motion carries. Thank you very much. Next is the CEO president's goals for 2022 to 23. And I'll turn that over to Dr. Bornstein. Uh, you will recall at your retreat, uh, we also talked about um, the goals for 22-23. This is the final year of our five-year strategic plan. And those items that are listed there are focused on uh, the fifth year of the plan. That's all I need to say at this point, Chair Oxiger, unless you have something else you wanted me to say. Okay, no, no. Um, I just uh, wanted to give you the opportunity to say anything about those if there were any. So uh, again, we've had an opportunity to review those in our packets as we discussed uh, in the retreat. Uh, so again, I'll ask, are there any changes or anything that anybody wants to make? And if not, I'll ask for a motion. I move to approve as presented. And I second that motion. Hey, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. Thank you very much. Next is uh, policy 24, code of conduct. Um, we've started this quite some time ago. Uh, Trustee Hout and I uh, initially took from our previous retreat uh, before our last one, uh, some uh, 20 truths that we had gotten from that retreat. And we developed or devised uh, kind of an outline for a code of conduct. We discussed these um, uh, following that, and then we discussed them in depth at our uh, last retreat. And uh, what you see before us is what we have come up with as proposed code of conduct uh, for the Board of Trustees. So uh, again, I'll offer the opportunity to uh, have anybody present any changes. Um, and if there are none, I would ask for a motion to adopt the code of conduct. I, I have one question if I could. Yes, sir. Uh, under the Board of Trustees President's uh, Relations, I'm not disagreeing with this. I, I'm just uh, wondering, you know, what the interpretation of the number 13, the board of trustees supports the president. Uh, it, it, you could read that as whatever the president says or does, you know, we support it. And in most cases, I think we do. Uh, but uh, maybe Dr. B or, uh, Somebody else could just explain what's the interpretation of what that means. So it is a broad. Um, statement. Oh, go ahead, Lyle. Well, I was just going to say I was going to follow that up uh, with the the put it in context with the rest of that sentence does not undermine his or her authority and counters misinformed public criticism. I think that all goes together in context. Uh, so, you know, that's it, not to say we would di ever disagree with the president or anything like that. It's just that we don't do it in public. Uh, we support our president. And if we want to uh, have any uh, criticism or disagreements or anything, uh, for lack of a better term, that uh, we do that uh, with the president. And that's how I interpret that. No, go ahead, Dr. B. So I guess um, it is broad and that means a lot of different things. So let's take um, current incumbents out of it. So whoever is sitting in this position, right? There needs to be the board support of the CEO. Again, as Lyle said, you don't need to agree with him or her, but there needs to be support of the president that, that you respect that person, um, you have 
a certain amount of trust moving forward with that person and supporting that person in that person's leadership role. As you move through the rest of the sentence, I would say intentionally, you're not, you're not intentionally undermining that person's authority because that's not supporting the role, right? Because you have the board and you have the CEO and they need to work in conjunction with each other. So if you're undermining that person's authority, you're not supporting them. And then countering misinformed public criticism, you know, that's the other part of having each other's back. So if, if the board uh, was getting some misinformed public criticism, it would be my job to say, well, you know, that, that's actually not what happened in that board meeting. This is what happened in the board meeting, right? So it's sort of, we have each other's backs, if you will. So that's pretty much what, what that means. It's very broad, um, but it doesn't mean that, you know, we agree on everything, that you're not going to disagree in, in a public setting. I mean, that's, that's public discourse, right? Um, it, it just means that we support one another. That we have a relationship of support. I'm just wondering, would it read better if it said the president slash CEO is supported by the board of trustees? and does not in, undermine, just wonder if it should be switched. I don't know. Sure, we can, we certainly can do that. It, it, I'm, I think I'm interpreting this, uh, something like Heidi is, uh, I, I saw those uh, three components to that sentence. The Board of Trustees supports the president. One thing, does not undermine his or her authority. Sure. Second thing. Yeah. Uh, I didn't necessarily tie that back to the first, uh, the first one. Uh, part, a and then uh, counters misinformed public criticism. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I see that as a standalone okay. ethical uh, accountability for sure. us. So yes, I think if we provide a bit more explanation to that first component, the board of trustees supports the president. <laughs> So it isn't so subject to interpretation uh, every time it might come up. Sure, and it sounds like we want to pull those things out so that we can pull out those other two pieces as its own number as well. And Heidi, do you want to say, uh, Trustee Wendell, do you want to say what you had said before so we can make sure um, we have it? Because we'll reframe that piece too. I'm just thinking maybe it should say the president slash CEO is supported by the board of trustees, which does not undermine his or her authority and counters misinformed public criticism. Or maybe the first part of that sentence and then Jean pulling out the other two as its own, Trustee O'Hara as its own. Yes, I, I think that might be okay. helpful. Yeah, okay. So I guess if, if you're going to uh, make any motion to approve, make sure you approve as edited. Okay. Yes, that would, that would, uh-huh. And to, so to, just to, to make it a little bit cleaner, could we have a motion to amend as Trustee Wendell suggested? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we would need to have move to amend this and then vote to approve it as amended. So we would need two motions. Um, so that it's clean and can be done all at once. Um, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Sure. And yeah. I, so, so I, then I have, I've written down what Heidi said. So Heidi, you don't have to remember what you said. So I have it written down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so good job, Jerry. You're asking for a motion to amend, separating the first part of that sentence from the latter two parts of the sentence. Is that correct? Correct. So that takes us from 19 to 20? Correct. So I so I can restate the motion and we can just get a, a second on it if that is helpful as well. Um, so the, the motion would be to reword item 13 to just say the president slash CEO is supported by the board of trustees and then creating an item 14 and an item 15 that read out that the board of trustees does not undermine his or her authority and um, that the Board of Trustees counters misinformed public criticism. Yes. Yeah. So, trustee Habit would go to 21. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> if you are comfortable with that, someone could say so it's moved in a second. <laughs> well, can I ask you a, another question mm -hmm. there? It, it sounded like uh, then number 13 would be 
the board of trustees supports the president, which doesn't really change. Uh, it doesn't give the clarity that I was thinking would be helpful. You know, in public or, uh, you know, I don't know, it is so broad is my, my so, question. So the, the, the proposed language, which we can edit, um, is the president slash CEO is supported by the board of trustees. So it kind of reworks it to where it's a little bit softer than maybe the original wording. But certainly if there's a preferred, another preferred language, it can be amended that way too. So Trustee O'Hara, do you have a suggestion or um, some items that you want identified that define support, if I'm trying to interpret what you're saying? Uh, Think I think something role? about uh, in the in the public sure. forum supports you as a, as a a group a board of trustees we support you individually in our discussions in you know, whether this is a public forum uh, yes uh, does I I. I guess I'd have to think of the wording okay. that I think provides the clarity that would be very helpful. I just had an idea because I think the word support is what's. Go uh, ahead, please. You up. Okay, sorry, Chair Oxiver. Um, That's all right. The Board of Trustees and the CEO President work in partnership, period. Yes, I would feel better with that. That would be its own. How's that? Yes. That's okay. Right. Heidi, uh, Trustee Wendell, are you comfortable with Matt, that? We were going to, I think, insert her role. Insert what? Her, his or her role as president. He supports his or her we role. Were, as we were talking about saying the president is supported, or the board of trustees supports the president CEO in his or her role. But that, that kind You'd of. like that too. I like that language because it, your role is defined, okay? It, it's, it, that's a lane, you know? That's a lane that we all agree on. And I feel comfortable with that statement, you know? I'm comfortable with that. You know, it's, it's in that lane, you know? I think, uh, Trustee Howe, that's a perfect way of saying it because obviously, you know, if I go and rob a bank, you're not going to support me in that, right? Right. Yeah. You said. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's a crazy example. Share. It's, yeah, it's too broad, right? Okay. Good. Okay. Is everybody comfortable with that? The Board of Trustees supports the President in her role? Is that what we're saying? The yes. president in, in his or her role yeah. as president. Yeah. That's kind of redundant, but mm -hmm. makes, makes it. So it, it, if we could have a motion to amend this in that way, can um, and, that and, yep, and I, can, I can read it back. Um, so the motion would be to um, amend item or part 13 to say the board of trustees supports the president slash CEO in his or her role and then there would be a new item 14 which would say the board of trustees does not undermine his or her authority referring to the president mm -hmm. and then item 15 it would be um, the board of trustees would counter misinformed public criticism okay is everybody comfortable with that okay. need further does that it's redundant we're using president twice is that, is that right. necessary you know, okay. So do we have a motion to that effect? I motion that we amend as Jerry stated. <laughs> I second that one. Do we have a second? I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend uh, items 13 and add 14 and 15 amended um, as presented. Um, any further discussion? Um, just, to, just to kind of a follow up from the retreat meeting. When you're looking at this, we have a code of ethics and we have a code of conduct that we're 
presenting. And the best way that I think with Jennifer, the attorney, we, I, I kind of made the metaphor, the, the code of conduct's kind of like the fine print of the code of ethics. So it's, the, it's, it's kind of like a follow-up through that and kind of gives a little bit better definition and doesn't allow for misinterpretation as much, or any, for that matter. So that's kind of the purpose why you have this. It's not really redundant. It's just a further description. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, if there's no other questions, um, we have a motion on the floor. We have a second. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, that motion carried and that covers the amendments. So now we need a motion and a second to adopt policy 24 code of conduct as amended. Move to approve code of conduct as amended. amended. I second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Good work. Next is the uh, item D procedure 63 dash 01 distinguished fellow award. And um, this comes as a result of a uh, the the current uh, policy just simply stating that the um, award will be presented by the board president during the annual commencement ceremony in May of each each year, and it's pretty limited. Uh, in the last two times this award has been presented, uh, we've kind of run up a, against some uh, complications in that in meeting the date, in uh, in um, people being unable to attend at the designated time, et cetera. So it's being suggested that we revise this to simply change it to say the board president will contact the recipient and invite them to receive the award in May or soon thereafter, period. And then it goes on to say the award will consist of a plaque, uh, an acrylic award, as stating the name of the award, the year in which the award was given, and the college logo, which is just adding some, some verbiage, um, seal or name. So it's pretty simple. It certainly would make it uh, easier to uh, address uh, situations where the recipient might not be able to make the ceremony to receive the award. So um, if, is there any discussion on this? Any questions? I, I do. Uh, Dr. B and I kind of went over this yesterday and I didn't have it in front of me. I, I, you know, this, I just see it as, I understand the, the continuity of time and place and making sure everybody's on that. I would say if we could make it state that it'll be delivered at the May commencement or a time convenient for all concerned something in that rate range and that just that doesn't i mean it's an honor that we we've, we've bestowed upon countless people over the years and i think having those individuals come come up on the stage is noteworthy enough that we don't want i don't read it as a re commencement's completely taken out of it as i read this but i think if we should say at the may commencement or a date convenient for all concerned you know for you know, just to kind of, I understand the logistics of the last three years of crazy dog. So, any people. other comments on along those lines? I, I like the way Mark has characterized it you know, as far as the schedule. Uh, yeah, it, I think it's optimum to be able to bring them up on the stage. Uh, uh, but if it's not possible, which we found out, it's at times very difficult. Right. It, Another way. Yeah, it's been difficult. Yeah. All right, Jerry, do you have um, uh, uh, the verbiage for that that you want to, can read back to us? Yep. Or summarize I, I, that. 
Yep, I do. Um, so it, it would just read that the board president uh, will contact the recipient and invite them to receive the award at the May commencement or at a time convenient for all concerned. Is that, sure. is that good? Okay. Okay. Any other comments, questions? You want, what do you need with C? Is that uh, so that that piece it would just change into just a description of what the award would look like. That way, there's if that does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Do you have a question on that on that verbiage, Mark? I just, well, you do, I guess it's redundant if we're going to the board president will contact in nine. C is just what the plaque looks like, right. name and physical, how it's going to be displayed, and that's kind of a separate. Right. Issue yeah. uh, commencement is not needed. Right. This is so small, but I'm having a hard time with the word acrylic in there. <laughs> acrylic? Yeah. 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 Faux glass. Yeah. <laughs> Faux glass, yeah. <laughs> we can definitely change it. <laughs> oh, it could be a plaque. <laughs> I, I guess I guess I'm not understanding what what the question is, Mark. I'm saying, Lyle, I have a hard time with the the <laughs> acrylic, the word acrylic. I think it should just say a plaque slash award. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Any other comments? Oh, we're good. So, so is is, is that is that does everybody else feel that way? Anybody not feel that way? I think I think acrylic sounds a little cheap. Okay. I have the same problem, but I didn't know how to say it. So. <laughs> okay. So should we should we just take a, and say a plaque stating the name of the award? Period. Yeah. Is that okay? Yep. We're gonna yeah. say the plaque okay, slash award because it may not okay. be. A plaque. Maybe in the yeah. Okay. So Jerry, you want to read that back to us so we know yeah. what it's going to say? Sure. So um, it, I'll reiterate um, for part nine as well. So it would just read sure. that the board president will contact the recipient and invite them to receive the award at the May commencement or at a time convenient for all concerned. And then part C um, and part one of part C would just say a plaque slash award stating the name and then continued on through there. Okay, everybody okay with that? Yep. Okay, any any other discussion? Do we have a motion to um, to adopt procedure 63-01 distinguished fellow award as amended? We'll, no, we'll, we'll need the motion to amend first, Chair. I Sorry. make a motion to amend as Jerry sure. does. Okay. And I second we have that. a motion to amend as Jerry read it back. And I second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, now catching up with myself. Do we have a motion to adopt procedure 6301, distinguished fellow award as amended? I would so move. We have a I motion. second that as well. We have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, thank you very much. Next is information items, events and agenda items, calendars. Jerry. Yes, thank you, Chair Oxiger. I'm just gonna pull up the calendar really quick so I have it in front of me. Um, you'll find a copy of the upcoming events calendar in your packet. Um, and I've sent a couple of uh, reminders about some upcoming events in our, our monthly emails as well. So I'm just going to highlight those again, just so you're aware. Uh, this Saturday, uh, August 13th is Ames Aviation Day at the Flight Training Center out in Loveland. Uh, from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's a public event, so it's not something that you'll need to RSVP to me or to anybody for, just as an FYI to you guys if you'd like to attend. So you're welcome to do that. Um, and then I also wanted to highlight the upcoming fall-in events. Um, I won't go through them in detail here, but you'll you'll know the different dates and locations for those. Um, if you would like to attend one of those, or if you're planning on that, let me know just so we're aware of who's who's coming. Um, just let me know ahead of the event so that we can get a list together of which trustees will be attending. 
And then next, I also wanted to highlight the um, upcoming events, uh, not upcoming events, the upcoming items uh, for the September board meeting. Um, first, I wanted to remind everyone that that meeting will be held at the Flight Training Center out at Loveland. Um, so that will be where our September board meeting and work session are. That will be a joint um, work session with the Ames Foundation. So that will occur during the work session. And there will also be um, an in-depth facilities master plan update in that work session as well. And then you'll note in your packet uh, for action, there will be a designation of hearing officers, which is an annual uh, recurring item. And there will be more detail in your packet at that time about that item. But um, that one's a, a standing item each September. And then for the president's report, there will be an assessment report and sabbatical reports. So from those faculty members that were granted sabbatical in the past, they're coming forward now in September to provide their report on what they um, what they did during their sabbatical. So those are the upcoming standing items for September. Chair Oxford, I'd like to just jump in um, going sure. back to the calendar of events. Uh, you'll notice convocation day on September 9th, the time that's listed is 9 to 4. That is a full day for employees. However, um, we will all be together from 9, well, 8.30ish to noon. And then from noon on, employees will be with their departments and so forth. We absolutely invite you and encourage you to participate in the 8.30 to noon if you are interested. Um, this year's focus uh, for convocation is storytelling and sharing our stories. Um, so uh, I'm not going to give you any more teasers other than that, uh, but that's, okay. that will be the, the content for convocation. Thank you. And just to, to piggyback on that, um, if you would like to attend, uh, just let me know ahead of time, ahead of the event, so I can get you registered. Um, that way, they can be expecting you. So just let me know ahead. Okay. Anything else? Okay, then. Any questions of Jerry? None? Okay. Uh, next, is there any correspondence? Dr. B, do you have any correspondence? Nope. I think I lost something here. Okay, no correspondence? No, sir. Uh, draft, draft Board of Conduct Ethics Procedure. Um, Lyle, I think you have an old agenda because we took that off for this meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, next, then, is the ARPA grant funds discussion, Dr. Bornstein. Okay. I'm um, actually, that went under uh, the CEO President's report. So um, if you're ready, I'll just go ahead and do the CEO President's report, Chair. Uh, okay, uh, give me just a second here. Um, just uh, kind of a reminder that uh, we made some changes based on what we brought out of our uh, uh, fall retreat, that uh, there's uh, a change in the way the president's report is being uh, done. Uh, not all items are outlined that, like they were. Um, uh, Chuck will be per, uh, given a, pre a presentation on the annual grants report, but um, we need to ask you, first of all, are there any questions on any of the other items uh, presented uh, that you might have before we cover the ones uh, that are specifically listed here? And if there are none, then uh, we'll go ahead with the president's report and uh, I'll turn it over to you, Dr. B. Okay, thank you, Chair Axiger. So as, um, Lyle mentioned, you'll recall at our retreat, there was a conversation about wanting to um, really have more time to spend with the board talking on subjects that needed to be discussed and reduce the, uh, the time that we talk at you, if you will. Um, so the highlights and all those things are still in your packet from every cabinet member and will continue to be What's under the president's report now are those annual monitoring reports that you've asked for. 
Um, so we'll continue with that unless that's, you know, at some point something you feel that we don't need. So the annual budget, re uh, not the annual, the monthly budget report is also in the packet. And that's why Chuck will continue to call you ahead of time to see if you have any budget issues. Um, so every month what I will do is, as Chair Oxiger just did, is say, do you have any questions on any of the highlights that were in your packet? And if so, then we'll ask a cabinet member to come up. If not, then we'll just go directly to those specific oversight monitoring reports that we have on that calendar annually. Does that make sense? Okay. So after reviewing the packet, are there any questions regarding the highlights that you were interested that you want more information on before we jump into Chuck giving the annual grants report? No. Good. Okay. 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 So, oh yes, Trustee Shock. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if this is a place or where in this with some of the changes that we're doing. Um, I did have a question on um, the CDL in the Fort Lupton campus report. Okay. All right. So I'll ask Dr. Rothmer to come on up to the podium because that would have been in his uh, the academic uh, division's highlights. I actually think it's probably, I don't think you're going to need a whole lot of paper, but um, on the CDL licensure and when it talks about we hope to train 25 plus JBS drivers annually, is that a broader CDL class? I'm just trying to figure out who all does that target or bring in, or is it just JBS? Who gets to benefit from that programming? It, well, certainly the intent of that JBS partnership was them to help us and them identify drivers for JBS, but certainly our CDL program is broad and for anyone who has that interest. And we work with all potential employers because as you know, that's one of the top needs, not only in Colorado, but the nation. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other highlight questions from anything in the packet? Um, just, I. And again, I'll, I'll look through this packet and might have questions that I can just go one-on-one -on -one that way. Um, I do like to see information regarding, you know, year-to-year -year, um, demographics, different retention ratios, things like that, how we're doing there. Obviously, coming out of COVID, we're, we're just fighting through that, that, those waters, and that's totally understandable, but I do like to know how we're progressing with that and also student ratios of concurrent right. to all of that. So enrollment report. Enrollment reports right. are always kind of fun for me right. to look at. Which we will ask um, probably Aaron next month uh, yeah. to do. We, we'd like to get through census date to yeah, give you accurate what, there's numbers. There's no urgency next month. I won't be here, but I do oh, Okay. Well, in, a, then we'll, in an upcoming month, we'd like to get through census date so the numbers sure. are accurate. Yeah, that's what I, I know there's yeah. a time when that becomes yeah. more efficient for you. And sure. I think that makes sense. Yeah. So it's coming. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions on the highlights in the packet? We'll move things along. Okay. So Mr. Jensen, I believe, is um, with us, and I just saw him unmute. Uh, so we might see his face soon. Uh, and he's going to go ahead and give our annual grants report that's also in your packet. Um, in my diligent is page 58 of your diligent book. I think it might be the same in yours. Right. Welcome, Chuck. Thank you, Dr. Bornstein. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, you have the annual grant report in front of you, and I'll just give a couple brief highlights over it. I mean, each year we, we break that report into four different sections. Uh, student support services, enhanced learning experiences, community assistance support, and then collaborative partnerships. And I'll just briefly give a couple highlights in, in some of those areas. Again, in our student support services, uh, we continue to be uh, very successful in obtaining TRIO grants. 
uh, both the TRIO Classic and TRIO STEM. We are now entering the third year of a five-year uh, relationship or commitment from the federal government on those two programs. And those continue to be very, mm -hmm. uh, very helpful programs to our students. Uh, the new one that was exciting this year was uh, Colorado, state of Colorado put out for grant opportunities, uh, the Colorado Opportunity Scholarship Initiative, Finish What You Started. And uh, Ames was successful in securing a, a four-year award with that from the state of Colorado to help students who have, have gone to school in the past and are re-engaging both uh, from previously attending and so helping them finish what they started. Uh, that grant provides uh, funding to help uh, with advising and support of those students. And it also provides monetary scholarship awards uh, to those to those students. So that's been an exciting project this year for our, our, our grants office and our student services SACE uh, department. And also within our student services, we've been very, we continue to have a very strong relationship with the Weld Trust. And uh, we've been successful in, in getting applications to them for, for several things. Uh, this year, they're helping us out in pantry and also in uh, teletherapy, uh, providing some funding for us to do uh, a, a project where we can provide tele-counseling and teletherapy to students uh, remotely. So those have been exciting projects. Uh, in the enhanced learning experiences, uh, we continue to be, uh, we do a, a lot of good work with our Perkins grants where we purchase a lot of equipment uh, for our academic programs. And that's been a long ongoing project with the state of Colorado. And we always receive that support from them. Uh, the last page is always exciting to talk about, you know, the collaborative partnerships. Uh, while these don't necessarily have dollars associated with them, with them, it just it just shows some of the depth of the work that we do with many partners within the school districts, within with other universities, University of Colorado, Northern Colorado, and then of course our uh, Bueno Center down in Fort Lupton with the University of Colorado. And so it's just it's always I always like to point that out that not all this has to do with dollars and cents. A lot of it, uh, there's a good portion of it that has to do with relationships with the different areas that we work with, both with the school districts and other higher ed, higher institutions of higher ed. So uh, that's some, some real brief highlights of, of the report. I'll stand for any questions that board members may have. Uh, Chuck, I don't have a question. I, I got a comment though. You mentioned collaboration and partnerships, et cetera. Um, I had a call from Angie Passioni uh, with the uh, State Board of Education yesterday. Uh, she uh, she called and wanted to share a few things uh, that's going on down there. But one of the big things she emphasized was how well uh, Ames does in the area of collaboration and uh, partnering. She was very, very complimentary and uh, wanted to make a point of how well we are recognized across the state in this effort. So I just thought I'd share that with you uh, since you mentioned it. Thank you, that's a, that's a very, uh, very nice comment to receive. Okay, thank you, Chuck, appreciate your time. You bet. Uh, our next update uh, that's not in your packet is the ARPA grant funds update and Dr. Rothmer is going to give us the latest and greatest. You may recall in May, we were talking to you about the possibility of an ARPA grant for the aviation partnership with Northern Colorado um, Regional Airport. And we were thinking that the grant was gonna drop immediately and we might have to have a special board meeting and we waited and waited and waited and you got some of those updates throughout the summer and my email updates so hopefully we have some good news maybe not i don't know i was just saying and i'm done the update <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, thank you dr bornstein uh, what i do have for you is three key messages and then one takeaway so one as dr bornstein mentioned the american rescue plan act our focus on that was uh, technology and transportation innovation hub, which would be a new educational facility out at NOCO Regional Airport dedicated to careers in technology. The second thing I wanted to share with you is the key objectives of this proposed grant. And those key objectives are to expand aviation offerings to our students, complete avi 
and complete the aviation ecosystem, attract and retain talent through career and technical education, workforce development, and connection to employment in Northern Colorado, and drive investment in targeted high growth sector of the economy and position Northern Colorado as a leader in aviation technologies. So that was the focus of the grant, the key objectives. Then I also wanted to share with you, Dr. Bornstein touched on a couple of them. Our key external partners in this effort are the Northern Colorado Regional Airport, Larimer County, the um, City of Fort Collins, City of Loveland, the Poudre School District, Thompson and the Thompson Valley School District. So these entities are coming together. Um, and as Dr. Bornstein said, we haven't heard yet, but the takeaway and the what we believe the timeline to be is the grant application process is expected um, sometime between September and November being due in December. So again, a very quick turnaround. And as you know, um, Eric Kimmler and Alex Wernsman came and did a, a very thorough update of what's being proposed. So teams have been continuing to work on it. Um, once that drops and we have the specifics of it, we'll certainly be back with you to share those details and um, what's being proposed for your review and feedback. Any questions on the ARPA process at this point? Okay. We believe me, we are anxiously awaiting. So as soon as we hear anything, you will know. It's a great opportunity. You know, if we can land that plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's no pun intended. No pun intended. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Rothmer has the next update. This drum roll is our HLC response to our three year AIMS assurance argument. And you will see also on the screen, Brianna Stoyich, our rock star accreditation lead. Um, she has a much longer title, but uh, I like rock star. So, Russ, I'm going to be quiet so you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bornstein. So, as you recall, over the last three years, I've um, stood in front of you and had Rian and other members of the HL Steering Committee or AIMS team members share with you where we were in the process and those um, different items that we were working on. And what I want to share with you, those work groups have spent countless hours, and I had no I had shared you know, different aspects of it, but I did want to share um, four fun facts with you about that process. So we had over 130 AIMS team members contribute to the narrative and the evidence. And from, so, you know, what's, yeah, and. So the um, narrative, the final submission, as I mentioned to you, we were allowed 35,000 words. Um, our assurance argument came in at 34,690 words. The beauty of it, though, is that's still not enough to tell our story and really what we have to do to establish that we've met the criterion. And as part of that is we're allowed to link evidence in throughout that document to show, you know, we say we're doing this, but can you show us? Can you give us that evidence? So there were over 1,200 pieces of linked evidence through that report. So an incredible undertaking, an amazing job. And this next part I want to share with you isn't about me, but I want to give you the context of how impressive this is. So for the last 15 years, I've served with the Higher Learning Commission on their peer review core. So doing these reviews at other institutions, analyzing their assurance arguments and evidence. What I wanted to, why I share that with you is the next part I wanted to say. In doing this for over 15 years and being accountable for accreditation at several other higher education institutions and seeing many other assurance arguments, this has been by far the best process, the most well organized, transparent, inclusive piece. And that is because of the leadership and dedication of Brianna Stoyich, who is our Director of Accreditation and Compliance. So I wanted to give that little bit of context as I introduced Brianne to um, share some other specific news from that assurance argument. Brianne? Thank you, Dr. Rothamer. <laughs> Good afternoon, Dr. Bornstein, Chair Oxiger, and Board of Trust members. I'm humbled to be here today and share um, that this three-year college-wide endeavor has proven to be an exciting opportunity to tell AIMS' story and to highlight the ways AIMS focuses on student success and serving our communities. 
I'd like to thank everyone who contributed to the project over the last three years. Ames is an incredible institution that truly bodies the all in sentiment. And in that spirit, please join me in celebrating the good news that we met all five accreditation criterion and did not receive any monitoring reports. <laughs> the best outcome. And uh, I'd like to take a moment to share HLC's conclusion about our assurance argument. They wrote, Ames Community College is a mature institution with structures, policies, tools, and experience in place to support its plans for continued growth, responsiveness, and improvement. Ames enjoys stable human, financial, and physical resources. The college is an integral member of its community and service district and seeks to fulfill its mission through informed planning and decision-making. Ames plans capably for growth and change and employs appropriately credentialed faculty and staff who manage its multiple locations. The college competently fulfills expectations in the criteria and core components. Wow. Did, um, do you have anything else, Brianne? For a, I one don't. Last? Okay, thank you very much. So one of the things that also was very telling to me, and um, Dr. Bornstein shares this story, is the, um, Dr. Bornstein led a group of us to attend the Alliance for Innovation and Transformation Conference in Nashville, and certainly more to that, uh, about what a great experience it is for Ames. But how it fits with this story is at that conference was one of our reviewers who analyzed our assurance argument and sought out Dr. Bornstein and myself and said, I needed to see and put names and faces to what you all are doing there because I was so impressed with your assurance argument. And he said, and he had heard that we were hosting um, the CEO rep meeting in March for AFIT next and he says, I can't wait to come and see Ames Community College. You all are doing such an amazing job. So it was, I mean, it was just heartwarming to hear um, that from a fellow peer reviewer. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you everyone. This is important uh, to Ames existence and it really gives the foundation for everything we do. Um, I'm not going to go through my highlights because then I would be not following the rules. However, um, take a look at the photo in the president's report where Heidi is shouldering the beam. <laughs> so um, we didn't really talk about this at retreat, but I'd like to do this and then you can tell me if we still want to continue doing this. Is there any supervisor in the audience that would like to introduce a new employee? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, John and Russ, you wanna just kind of make your way up to the podium and you can do some quick introductions. So I have three people to introduce to everybody. I'm reintroducing them kind of. Um, First, all the way to the far left, we have Nick Barnett. Um, he was contracted as security with us, but now he is formerly an AIM security tech officer. Um, he is with us and he will be patrolling and working during the day shift on AIM's campus. Chris Kraft, <laughs> Chris Kraft is our, I'm oh, sorry. Please save your applause for the end. Okay. <laughs> um, Chris Kraft is our security, another one of our security tech officers that we just hired um, that was contracted with us, has been with us for a while under a contract uh, capacity, but now is part of the Ames family and he will be working uh, during the day as well. So you'll see him on that Ames regular schedule. And then the tall gentleman there, uh, he was assigned to Ames as one of the first SROs that was assigned to Ames, worked at, for the Will Sheriff's Department as our SRO for about 10 years. He was here before me and helped me get adjusted into my job when I took over this position and spent the last, I think, four years as Assistant Director of Campus Safety and Security at Front Range 
And uh, I won't say if I recruited him back, but he did come back to us. And now he's the assistant director for campus safety and security for us. And this is our team now, so. Thank you, Dr. Bornstein, members of the board. I'd like to introduce you to two new um, of our academic deans. I don't know if I feel, y'all come up here. <laughs> Um, first, uh, Dr. Jim Vernon, who's our new academic dean we uh, met during the work session over business and technology. He previously served as a faculty in business and economics and then chair of business, IT and manufacturing for Front Range Community College. And prior to his transition to teaching, Jim's career included management roles for John Deere Credit as well as, well as strategic consulting for financial services, healthcare, and IT service industries. So welcome. Jim, Dr. Vernon. Next is Dr. Susan Moreland. She is our new academic dean for public safety, transportation, and early childhood education. Uh, Susan is a 20 year veteran of the United States Air Force. Thank you for your service. And since retiring from the military, she has served in multiple academic leadership roles, including Dean of Nursing, Health Sciences, Public Safety, Outdoor and Outdoor Studies at Colorado Mountain College. So we're stealing from our friends, so, but welcome. Thank you. Any other supervisor that would like to introduce a new employee that's in the audience? Okay, Chair Oxiger, that concludes the President's report. Well, thank you much, uh, Dr. B, appreciate it. All right, next is uh, reflections and comments from board members about AIMS. Do any of our trustees have any comments regarding AIMS or future topics? I don't know if I have any um, future topics. Um, comments that it's always just a complete delight to be here to see all the faces. Um, I was excited to see the students. That's what makes Ames go around. And their um, and energy level was enough to make me get over there and walk and introduce myself and meet them all. So um, that's always a big highlight, I think, for everyone. That's why we're here. Um, I'm excited about the new nur uh, nursing. Um, bachelor degree, four-year degree, which would be great for this institution and for those students who seem to find that Ames is the place to be and not somewhere else. So I appreciate that everyone really looks towards um, finding other other avenues for students to succeed. So, and everyone did a great job today. Thank you. I, I would just add uh, my uh, comment on appreciation for the four-year nursing program. Having spent 30 plus years in the healthcare administration, and I can't remember a time when we had all the nurses that we needed. And the demand for nursing graduates and quality of care is just growing. So it's nice to see that AIMS is gonna be able to do our part to meet that regional and national need. Good, good job. Yeah. And I would echo Jean on the healthcare with my own personal professional investment in the healthcare arena. But I think that's one of many when I look at the certificates and um, the amount of programming that continues to, it, it amazes me as I get even more acquainted and internal knowledge of the workings of AIMS and just that quest for excellence of how do we meet the needs of our community and business um, and really moving forward and the amount of work, I, I have an even greater appreciation the amount of work that it takes. When I look at algorithms, Dr. Rothmer, I don't know how you put it on one page, um, but I think those are some of the pieces that just um, continue to impress me with this organization, so thank you. Um, I was very appreciative to learn on how we were always looking at value engineering or skilled and credential programs and finding a better way for them to kind of be accessible for students. You know, if 
19 is an easier sell than 29 credit hours, then let's do it and get them, get them, on, the, get them on a plane of, uh, of learning and, and developing those skills. I mean, that's what we're here for. It's part of our mission statement. Um, going back to our retreat, we had a great retreat. I actually did step out for the last 50 minutes of it, and then I thought, well, maybe I ought to listen to that. I learned a lot. Thank you, Jerry, for putting that together. If, it, if he can set you up, if you don't know what you said, it's a good thing. <laughs> and you know how, me, uh, how I can get off task a little bit. But long and short, that was a good good retreat. I think I learned a little bit about my self-awareness and how I can maybe be a better board member uh, and ask questions that are the right questions. Um, the other thing is, we are, I'm, I'm your from, uh, foundation liaison, so I, I'm going to give you a little update. It won't be a long one. Yeah, it'll be 30 seconds or less. Uh, we had two retreats after our last uh, board meeting in May. One was in early May. We had Mark Holtz. Uh, he was a facilitator for, with it. And we got our information kind of collected and, and looked at it. And then he came back with a report. I wish I had that with me. I didn't bring it. So maybe next meeting we can talk about that. But, you know, it's important, the foundation, what it does about gathering the connectivity in the community, we need to all be doing, we're all part of these, we're all foundation members. Think of yourself that way and what you can do to support all of our graduating students, they are foundation members, they're alumni. How many of those students lost, had a friend that didn't finish with them? What can they do to grab a hold of them and make them come back or ask them to come back? That's very important. Um, just Kelly gave me this number, it says, for 2023, 22, 23, year is up 48%. I don't know, I don't know. our first month. Kelly, I'm gonna have to, it's 48% of our goal? Total goal? No, you're up 48% of the last year of this time. Hey, girl. You know, what we do with those monies is so significant and how we grow that foundation is gonna be even more so. And we have some big goals in front of us, but it's going to take all of us to help it. Um, I did go to the Ames Car Show. It was a neat, neat event. I don't know if anybody made it out there. It was it was blazing hot, but it was just it was probably the best show that I've been to about I think three out of the last four or five, and uh, it was definitely I think the most successful. We got the little buggy ride down from the top of the hill, so it was very interesting. Um, Let's see, we got tours coming up as far as I'm talking about the foundation, the Qantas is coming in on, on the 20, 27th to attend campus automobile tour for the board members. What? What's that mean? Is that today? That was this morning. Ah, oh, I missed it. Um, but long to short, um, you know, what, what the foundation is doing is important. So we need to pay attention to that and support it as best as you can. Um, help people. But, People know there's Kelly and, um, and there's my other... Kelly and Kelly, how can I forget that one? Uh, I don't have anything else, but thank you for the meeting today. Anyone else? I want to quickly say you sent us an email, Lyle, and you told us to read the 44 pages of the HLC, which I did. <laughs> And I'm very impressed. I mean, they did amazing amount of work in order to pass that with flying colors. So hats off to everyone who did that. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure you read it. It was, I'm sure everyone did. That was an incredible, uh, incredible testament uh, to the leadership and the, the passion and commitment at Ames Community College. So uh, real quickly, uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, Angie Passione uh, with the Department of Education called me yesterday. Uh, this was uh, evidently something that she's doing with all the chairs across the state. And what it really is, it's a uh, it's an effort for the governor to uh, roll out his priorities uh, as he sees them uh, for the next year. And uh, so she shared some of those, uh, all of which Ames is already meeting and which uh, Angie was very gracious in, uh, in recognizing that and um, praising Ames uh, for the work we do. 
Um, I was extremely proud to, to hear her uh, talk about how um, much Ames is respected across the state uh, for all of our activities and uh, uh, the actual leadership role um, that we we play in many areas. Uh, specifically, uh, she mentioned uh, multiple times the Ames to UNC program and and uh, how that program is being looked at by multiple institutions across the state. Uh, she talks about our um, our scholarship programs and the aggressive manner in which uh, we uh, we pursue grants and uh, she encourages to continue doing so. Um, some of the grant information uh, she asked me to pass on to Dr. B, which I've done. So um, it was just a great phone call. It was uh, wonderful to talk to someone like her about Ames and uh, I was very, very proud. So thank you all thank you for all you do and um this was a great meeting so thank you very much thanks for all the reports uh, uh we continue to uh, be all in for Ames. so um if there's no other comments then we'll move on uh, to the assessment of the board meeting uh without going through each one unless everybody would like to are there any of those in particular that you would like to talk talk about or address. We know that we, we spoke with one voice today. I think we all had a chance to speak. I think we focused on all the right things. Um, we certainly get uh, all the information we need and our, our, everybody is more than willing to provide us more information that we need. So uh, I think um, another very successful meeting. Um, I hope everyone agrees. Any other comments regarding the meetings specifically? There are head nods around the room here, agreeing with you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. All right. Um, next on the agenda, uh, we will move into executive session as allowed by Colorado Revised Statute 24-6-402, parent 4, parent B, the board will adjourn into executive session to receive legal counsel. Uh, and we will do that shortly. And just to, to the advice of everyone, um, we will only receive uh, legal counsel. We will not make any decisions. We will not take any, any uh, votes, uh, make any decisions like that. And we will adjourn uh, from this meeting following the executive session. So there's no, re no need to hang around. We won't return to this meeting. So uh, with that, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session as, um, as allowed by CRS. I move to adjourn to executive session as allowed. I second it. We have a motion and a second to adjourn to executive session. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion is carried and we are adjourned to executive session. And uh, Jerry, I think we're meeting on what the second floor? How'd I do? Yes, that's correct. We'll be down in the second floor conference room. Thank you very much. We will see you there. Mm -hmm.